everyone, and welcome to Channel 18 TV News. I'm Don Julian. In the news, a 56-year-old Sulphur Springs man was taken into custody Wednesday afternoon by Sulphur Springs Police on an indecency with a child by sexual contact warrant. A 15-year-old child who does not reside in Sulphur Springs reportedly made an outcry and Sulphur Springs Police were contacted. The teen alleged she was sexually molested at a Sulphur Springs address when she was 11 years old, according to Sulphur Springs Police Detective Brian Shirtliff. As part of the police investigation, the teen was interviewed at a child advocacy center by a forensic interviewer specifically trained to speak with juveniles about allegations of abuse. Based on the police investigation, a warrant was attained for a 56-year-old man. The man was arrested at his home Wednesday afternoon. Kenneth Charles Smith was charged with indecency with a child by sexual contact. Bond for Smith was set at $100,000. A five-month investigation by Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association Special Rangers and Louisiana Department of Agriculture and Forestry brand inspectors resulted in a Louisiana man being jailed on three felony cattle theft charges in Texas. TSCRA Special Rangers Larry Hand and Bo Fox were reportedly in Louisiana Tuesday as LDAF brand inspectors arrested a 40-year-old Heinston, Louisiana man. Justin Glenn Thompson was booked into the St. Landry Parish Jail awaiting extradition to Texas. The case against the Louisiana man came to light in February. In late August, a Wood County grand jury returned three indictments against Thompson for theft of 84 head of cattle, theft of 16 head of cattle, and theft of property more than $18,000 in cattle payment shortages. Warrants for Thompson's arrest were issued September 3rd. Investigators uncovered evidence the Louisiana, Louisiana man was using his position as an agent to divert cattle and funds for his own benefit. A new ordinance proposed by the City of Sulphur Springs uh, City Council would uh, amend city policies regarding curbside parking near intersections. The proposed ordinance would amend Chapter 25 of the Code of Ordinances to include a section prohibiting curbside parking within 25 feet of uh, any intersection inside the city limits. City Attorney Jim McElroy explained that this was an ordinance that city officials had received a request for. The idea of the ordinance is creation of a safety zone so that cars approaching an intersection are able to see the approaching street they are intersecting. McElroy said the ordinance would not be enforced unless signs are put up in affected areas. The proposed ordinance has received council approval on first reading. It will be taken up for second and final reading at a future meeting. September is emergency preparedness month across our nation. And for Hopkins County and Sulphur Springs citizens, you should be glad to know that when an emergency arises, we have a preparedness plan in place. I'm Andy Inslee, I'm Hopkins County uh, Fire Chief and Emergency Management Coordinator. Okay, and you've become very familiar to us, and thank you for all you're doing in our community. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that, and thank you for having us today. Yes, and Christy, good morning. Good uh, morning. Uh, introduce yourself. I'm Christy Springfield, and I'm the Assistant Emergency Management Coordinator for Hopkins County. Okay, well, I feel like we're well uh, covered already, but we're going to go through some of the details sure. of what you guys do and we have a lot of people in our community that uh, depend on you. Maybe they don't know it, but when an emergency rises, they, they need to know who and what to do. That's right, and, and I appreciate that vote of confidence because uh, the, there is a lot of things that we do on the, the back side of things that people don't really see and getting prepared. And that's the things that we do in emergency management is always being prepared because the last thing you want to tell your leaders of your community is if they ask, do you have a plan for that? 
well, yes, we do have a plan for that. And that's the, that's the correct answer, and that's the answer that we always strive to have. Uh, there's always room for improvement. Uh, there's always room for to see where, uh, as we did pa this past June, a, a disaster drill that actually occurred here in Sulphur Springs because Sulphur Springs has their own emergency management coordinator, Chief uh, Jason Rickerson, mm -hmm. and does a, a great job on that. But we did that as a collaborative effort between the, the county and the city. And we'll do another one, hope, in uh, the maybe early spring of this coming year. A little cooler. We did it in June. You know, we can always do things when it's really hot out there. <laughs> so it, it went, went very well. We got very good uh, reviews from our peers that came from other areas to uh, see how we do things in a disaster. Uh, we did a tornado simulation. Of course, it always happens a couple of days before, a couple of days after where it really happens. We didn't have the tornadoes, but we had the straight line winds and the heavy last uh, big storm we had in June. We had a lot of debris all over the city and then out in the county. You know, that's the way it works. You know, we get the real deal a couple of days before the, the drill goes on or vice versa, but everything went off with a hitch. Uh, Christy helped design that plan for uh, Chief Rickerson. Uh, that's what we do. We work together as far as the city and the county. That's always our striving goal is to become one unity and we have done very well. we got a great group of uh, stakeholders that play in this. And uh, we're just, our relationship is getting better and better. And that's, that's the end goal because we're here for the citizens of Hopkins County. Now, Christy and I were talking. So through the year, you do various teaching uh, things. Well, um, we do the exercises. We do not only the full skills, but we do some tabletops or drills, okay. and we run through scenarios and what we would do, and then we critique ourselves on how we can get better, what works, what doesn't work. And if it doesn't work, we see what we have in our annexes, and those are kind of like the emergency plans of the okay. county, and there's several of those. And if, it, if it's not working, we look at it, and we, what can we change here? What are some of the scenarios or some of the, the departments? The, the annex is really, and what an annex is, is basically a it's, a, it's a book, basically. Okay. And it's sent off to the state, and that the Texas Department of Emergency Management, uh, which governs all of us on emergency management, is more or less kind of like our Bible here. And it, it tells us from, you know, fire to law enforcement to uh, EMS to, uh, it's got all what, would happen, how will we deal with that, and it's sent off to the state, we have, those plans are good for five years, okay. and at one point all our plans are sent in at one time, that is a lot of paperwork sent in the state, so what we have chose to do now on our annexes is separate them, they're alphabetically numbered or lettered, okay. and we, we've done two or three at a time, and then we'll send them in for review, it takes several months to get it back from the state because it's looked through, I mean, just with a fine tooth comb. And that really is a baseline of how we do things in, in emergency management. And again, where I say when the, the leaders of our community ask, do we have a plan for that? Well, yes, we do. And here's Annex A and our Annex B. And that's the way that works on that. So that's kind of where we wanted to lay the, the base of this four-part series out for this month because the month of September is preparedness month mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to have other guests in uh, from like the 211 office we'll have uh, hopefully we can get uh, Chief Jason Rickinson in with us one of those okay. days uh, to talk about how they do things in the city and how they sound off the, uh, the tornado sirens What's what goes in behind that, that uh, thought process of how we do those things so and that's where we're uh, basically at on that side of it okay well, um, each Friday, now I'll be listening at 8.15 during September because this being Emergency Preparedness Month, we're going to do this each Friday and bring new information. Right. So I have a, a what if kind of question, and I guess we're covered for this. What if a 747 fully loaded with people crashed in Hopkins County? We have injured people. We have damaged. What, what happens first? Well, we uh, take a minute to pray. Lord, help us on this one. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. No, let's no. do it. Yeah. Right <laughs> yeah. No, uh, really, it's, it's all in our plans. And, you know, that's where we, we strive to work continuously with not only um, 
the volunteer fire departments was a big part of our plan. Uh, they're they're an entry part of it, uh, along with the, the city of Sulphur Springs, their fire department, law enforcement, Hopkins County Fire Department, and the, the sheriff's office. It is just, there's a lot of working pieces in that. And, of mm-hmm. course, uh, DPS, they would be right there with us, EMS. I mean, we have all those things where that would definitely be one of those all-call days where, mm-hmm. and then plus everybody around in the outlying areas of our county is something of that magnitude come in. But, yes, we are prepared for that kind of thing. It is very comforting to know that our um, people uh, in the uniforms are trained and, and they're ready and they, and they stay updated. Mm-hmm. Right. Because you never know what can yeah. happen. Right. That's exactly right. Yeah, and that's why we go to trainings. We, we're always looking for ways to learn things that we may not be like really good at or know very little about at all. Never had any experience. Right. And right. we go. We find them. We find those classes and we, we go. And usually we grow, go as a group. We take our whole team. Okay. And our team is, uh, of course, Christy and I and then uh, uh, Chief Deputy Tanner Crump and then the Communications Supervisor David Ray is our core group for the Hopkins County Emergency Management Team. Okay. And uh, there's times where, I mean, again, on the backside where people don't know when those storms are rolling through Hopkins County or coming in to Hopkins County, we're well there two or three hours in advance before it ever gets to our county. We kind of monitor that. Now, I give kudos to uh, Christy and David uh, Ray because uh, those two are just phenomenal to watch on the radar, how they read it. And they can, I mean, it was a lot of training on their end. Uh, the, it's really that's where I just kind of step back for a minute and watch them do it because they're so good at it. And I appreciate their, their hard work and dedication of learning how to read the weather because a lot of people don't know that we're, our radar sweeps from Fort Worth and Shreveport, they miss us. So it's really up to us. And also the city of Supper Springs, Jason Rickinson and his team, uh, they also are, are watching it. And there's times where we leave our homes in the middle of those bad storms and, uh, come to our emergency operations centers and monitor it. That way we can be right there. We call that a soft opening in our EOC. Okay. And we're there. I mean, in case something really shifts real bad, we're ready to go. We're ready. Yeah, and a lot of people don't know that, but and, you know, we'll, we'll tell the, the county commissioners and the judge, hey, we got a soft opening in the, in the EOC, and we'll communicate with the city's emergency management team. Uh, and that's the things we with the four incorporated cities here in Sulphur Springs, uh, Hopkins County area. Sulphur Springs has their own emergency management coordinator, coordinator which is Chief Rickson, and then Tyra, Como, and Cumby, Hopkins County. I, I do that for them as their emergency management coordinator. They opted out to not let their mayor do that, but okay. we did it. Okay. You know, it just makes sense for the smaller towns well. that you know it's because it's a lot of training and the time that they already do that voluntarily. It's not a paid position for those city council and mayor positions in those three smaller towns. So it makes sense on that side of it. And the, and the state allows them to do that. Well, it sounds like we already have plans in place for most any type of thing that commonly would happen mm-hmm. here in Hopkins County. And you pl- pretend or play like to, mm-hmm. to stay prepared uh, in, the, in the smooth times. Right. That's right. And did you have some uh, sites they could go to during this week to look at it, the preparing? Yes. Um, Ready.gov has great information on plans and uh, what kind of kits you can, disaster kits or just regular emergency kits. And also knowwhattodo.com are some great websites. Those are pretty easy to to, uh, remember. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ready.gov. Ready.gov and knowwhattodo.com. Okay. Mm-hmm. Helpful. And you do lots of things in our in our community. I mean, we were talking about illegal dumping. Dumping trash out in the county. And, it, and that's not a disaster, but it's it's another task that um, the department is, is suited with. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's things that, that Christy... Um, works on that side as well on the environmental side of things where uh, they also go out and do the uh, the septic systems Uh, they inspect those as they're being installed or having a problem with them Uh, her and jim dial do that and then um, they do the 
they'll go out there illegal dumping and that's you know you don't think that that's a, a big problem countywide and that's why we try to keep it there by going out and sending Jim and Christy out to look and that's where they have to dig through the trash I mean dig through it look for names and so see the violator to find out who the violator is right mm-hmm. yeah because we got to we have to take care of our county and our community that we live in and illegal dumping just leads to water pollution and leads to a lot of different things that is not good for our county. So we all got to be a, a good steward of where we live at. Well, most everything we do is less and less a secret today. So there's more ways that uh, things that people do will will be able to be found out. So the violator, he thinks, or he or she thinks they're going to just dump their stuff and leave. But what might happen after that? Well, they could get citations. Mm-hmm. So, and we'll make them come. We'll knock on their door. They can come pick it up. Hmm. And so there's a fee uh, with that. Yeah. Yes. And it could prolong if you decide not to pay those fees. It could lead to jail time. And according to what you dump it, and, and the weights of it, of how much you dump, it can be an automatically go to jail wow. type deal. So, so. Just don't do it. Yeah. That's the best <laughs> policy right there. <laughs> don't dump illegally. There's a lot more that we're going to find out over the next three weeks during Emergency Preparedness Month in September here on KSST. And thank you both for coming in. And we will see you again next Friday. Sounds great. Thanks for having us today. Thank you. Thank you, too. And have a safe weekend. That's Channel 18 TV News. I'm Don Julian. Thank you for joining me. And so long, everybody.